Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me. In today's episode, we are checking out the news. So let's have a look at some G-Shock rings, some custom collaborations, and some limited editions that are hitting the market. Thanks for joining me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Today we are spending time on news and before we start I want to thank the uh, websites which have given some of the insights in terms of what to talk about. So we've got The Verge, we've got G Central, which is always my go-to website. Uh, we also have Instagram and the Casio website but you know a lot of people do a lot of great work which helps to be able to uh, quickly get to what's interesting in the world of uh, G-Shock. Now, first off today, interesting one, a G-Shock ring. And, you know, this is Casio's first smart ring. Now, I think the, the title might be a little misleading. I don't think this is necessarily a smart ring. There are other manufacturers who do smart rings. It's Ura, I think I've, if I'm getting it right, the Samsung. Uh, these rings have a whole lot of functionality and capabilities built in them to be a smart ring. It's kind of like saying a normal Casio watch is a smart watch. Uh, it's not. It's a G-Shock watch. Uh, this particular ring is not necessarily a smart watch, a smart ring. It's a watch that has some particular capabilities built into the shape of a ring. But that's kind of cool. It's there to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Casio doing digital watches. So it's not necessarily a G-Shock but it is a Casio watch and they've formed it into the shape of a ring. It's got some uh, capabilities like date, time, uh, different time zones, and a stopwatch. Uh, it's gonna go for around about $128 US, and uh, will be available in Japan, so we might see if we can go and get one. It's got little inlets that can go inside to help you with the sizing capabilities and things like that. Um, but it's really just a, a nice way of, I guess, showing your support for Casio digital watches with pride, you can wear it as a bit of a ring. I, I don't think you'd probably use this as a daily driver. You might get sort of ostracized from the watch community a little bit, but it's a bit of fun and interesting way to, uh, to celebrate the 50th anniversary. Now, moving on from the ring, uh, I'm excited about this particular watch. I've spoken about this watch before. This is the uh, Master of G-Land Mudman, the GW9501KJ-8JR. This is a Japan exclusive watch, I believe. I don't think it's actually going to be available elsewhere, um, but it is one of those Earthwatch collaboration watches. So if we click on uh, here, you can actually see the Love to See an Earth backplate on the actual watch itself. Now, I've got Translate turned on the website here because, well, simply, I don't speak Japanese, and I've been watching this site for a long time to see when the Buy Now comes on the site, and we now have the pre-order sale button, which is clicked. So uh, some friends of mine in Japan are going to go ahead and try and get this one for me. But if we, uh, if we have a look, uh, let's just take off the translation for now this is the the actual watch i think this is a gorgeous watch first off big bold uh watch face positive display beautiful colors the bronzes the yellows the blacks the whites the gold um i i really believe that this is a a awesome looking watch uh, and is one which i think will take pride on the wrist quite often uh, it has a built-in compass on the actual screen as well let me see if i can sort of show that um, you can see there the compass and see how it's meant to sort of emulate the eye of the owl, the gold ring and the black on the inside, gold rings, black, and then the positive display. Um, a very, very cool watch, all built with uh, recycled materials as well. Uh, so very, very nice watch going for around about 64,900 yen, which in essence will probably be around about $550 sing. Um, so a really, really nice watch to be able to get. I'm hoping I can lock one of those in and get one over and I can show that to you shortly. <laughs> now, in addition to talking about uniqueness, there's been some collaboration watches that have been coming out shortly. Um, so one of them here is this Bait Cross G-Shock. Um, Bait is a brand which you know brings 
back old fashioned or old fashioned brands. So we've seen them do things such as sneakers, um, Air Jordan type uh, uh, hoodies and things like that. But what they've done here is they've done this collaboration with G-Shock on these DW5600 watches. And you can see it's very simple, very, very white and the green on black. Um, interesting color because typically we sort of see a positive display, which is your black on gray, so black text on the gray background, or you have the negative one, which is a um, black background with gray text on it, or, or at least a, a lighter text. What we're seeing here is a black background and green text. Uh, and they're really going for that sort of Apple feel. You can sort of see here, they've got the base in there, but the iconography, the, the font is very reminiscent of Apple. The logo has all different colors. You can even see in the band itself, it has that sort of look and feel of some of the packaging you would see in some IT equipment. So interesting, uh, interesting collaboration between Bait and G-Shock. I don't know if Apple would celebrate this or get upset about this. I mean, it's old school stuff there, um, but it's an interesting watch all the same. In, uh, in addition to that collaboration is also this collaboration with Subcrew. And Subcrew is a brand out of China and they do a whole lot of fashion and, and things like that. And um, they've done some collaborations in the past with skateboarders and those sorts of things. And what they're including here is a cap in their next purchase. So we're the sub crew, uh, kind of interesting with the uh, the hole in the top of the watch there. Uh, sorry, the, the cap, um, but the watch there as well. You know, it's a sub crew watch. It, it looks nice enough, I guess. It's not something I'd probably be rushing out for, but the the brand of sub crew is, is kind of nice, right? This will be available in China. Um, some of the things that they've done in the past, which I kind of like is the, the work they've done with skateboarders. I'm not much of a skateboard. I have a skateboard every now and again I go out, but I probably fall down more than actually going anywhere. Um, but I do like skate decks and some of the artistry work that actually gets into those. So nice to sort of see the collaborations here uh, between Subcrew and G-Shock to bring something out. In fact, I think a lot of the skateboard uh, collaborations actually have with anyone with G-Shock look really nice as well. So that's an interesting one to look at as well. Okay, now in terms of custom watches, and you know I've been a bit of a fan of doing custom watches on this channel. We've done some cheap ones from AliExpress. We've done some expensive ones with XKX Mod that I did with a GAB 2100 Caution Yellow. But this next one really takes the cake. Uh, this is by a group called B5K Customs. And what they've been doing here is to essentially use a process called Kerak coat Sarah coat I'm trying to work out how to actually say because I've never come across it before we'll go with Sarah coat I think that's really what they're, they're trying to say here but they use this process called Sarah coat and what they're doing is they're taking these existing watches and applying a Sarah coat finish to some of these watches and you can sort of see some of the customs that they're actually doing I mean this one they've even changed the uh, the display from a negative to a positive but to get a sense of how good this can actually look, check out these two watches. They've gone and used the Cerakote uh, process on those watches to give it a ceramic look and feel. Now, I had to go and have a look at what Cerakote actually was. And, and what it does is it's the world's leading thin film ceramic coatings. So you can basically get that thin film ceramic coating done to uh, a whole range of different products, right? So if you go to the gallery here and have a look at what they have, they've done it to tools, skulls, watches, phones, a whole range of, of different things with this Cerakote coating. And so what B5 Customs have done is they've applied this Cerakote coating to these watches to make it look really good. And I think the theme they've gotten here what they've done here with the uh, these watches has this really awesome sort of military type look to it, right? I mean, you know, it'd be interesting to sort of see how banged up it actually gets and, and does it sort of retain that sort of resilience. But looking at these uh, these watches with the Cerakote coating looks really, really nice. I don't think you can actually buy the bracelets by themselves. I think they sell them as a customized watch, but 
yeah, really, really cool uh, looking way to modify the watch to have that unique look and feel. Like it's it's super. Um, so yeah, so talking about unique look and feel of watches, there was also a MTG watch which I want to show you. Now this is the limited G-Shock MTG B2000YST-1A Storm Chaser Limited Edition unveiled by G-Shock UK. And it's a pretty nice looking watch. MTG is typically your mixture of metal and resin. And this is a, a great example of this. So you can sort of see we've got the full metal here and then the resin band. Um, but what's really nice is if you look at the top down view of this particular watch here, What's nice is you can sort of see the fades in and out of the actual colors on the particular watch. So we go from the resin band into this dark blue, which goes into the case and then fades through sort of purples into red to yellow and then into sort of a light bronzy steel, I guess, and then back through the band again. Uh, really, really nice looking MTG watch. Uh, expected price. $1,450, so certainly not a cheap one, uh, but it is MTG, so tough solar, multi-band six, uh, all of the uh, the features you would expect from an MTG watch, and that's sort of that combination of that resin and metal, so a really, really nice watch to, uh, to, to have on your list. Now, finally, talking about MTGs and the manufacturing process of the watches, there was a really nice article that was uh, published in Revolution, uh, the, uh, the the Casio site also put it on their website as well, which talks about the journey of how they build out their premium watches. And when we talk about the premium watches, we're kind of going a level above MTGs. We're now into MRG territory where we're starting to think about $5,000 and up, but some incredible, incredible watches all the same. And this particular article talks about that entire process and it's not just technology it's the people involved it's the the mindset and what they do and so they've talked a lot about what is that that identity what are they trying to go for from the very very beginning of making a watch which is really uh embraces a whole idea around toughness in what they do um but they talk a little bit about the competition with apple and garmin uh their point is they don't want to be a watch that does everything, but they want to focus on a couple of key things. Now, of course, many people have spoken on this channel or left comments and talked about the Rangemans as a good example of where this might have gone wrong, uh, myself included. The original Rangeman line was that watch which was built for resiliency. It was built by by the, the initial, uh, initial cre creation was for Rangers. You know, like really tough, resilient, get out there, um, had the capabilities to give you a compass, an altimeter, a barometer, all those different things. It it would basically recharge on tough solar. It had all of the features. And then over time, as the watch tried to embrace some of these other things that Apple and Garmin were doing, so the step counters, you had to start adding on additional uh, charging mechanisms and things like that, which got it further away from being that truly resilient to watch. So. You know, I, I get what they're trying to say and do here, but I don't know if that really was the best thing to do with, say, the range mans. Maybe you need to come up with a different product line. But this is their, their product, right? And so it's kind of nice that they go through and talk about all of the different angles. We can see a Frogman being tested here. Uh, this is pressurized underwater button endurance test. So lots of activation while under pressure. Kind of cool. Uh, if you look at some of the machines being used, a lot of custom-built machines. What I find interesting was this one here, where they talk about the actual people. Um, the only people who work on the premium production line, you can sort of see this is the premium production line, are those who are the top uh, people in the organization, right? So medalists are allowed to work on the premium line. To qualify, technicians must undergo a series of strict skill certification that runs according to grade, bronze to platinum, before reaching the covetous title of Meister. And they say here, uh, it's possible to accrue just 0.095% of passes out of 40,000 applicants. So that's a huge, well, a tiny, I guess, tiny sort of number of people who can go ahead and actually work on it. And I guess that's why you're potentially able to command such a high price for the MRGs because that's what that premium production line is doing. It's working on those MRG watches. And so some of the output 
of those uh, those production lines are these classic MRGs we actually see, like the samurai inspired armor. Um, so it's it's interesting to sort of see what's actually there. Something that came out of this as well, which I thought was interesting, was the conversation about the fact that there was a, a Discord uh, community as well maintained by Casio for the uh, for G-Shock. Uh, something I didn't know about before, so I went ahead and actually checked it out and. Uh, uh, had a bit of a look. I'm not sure much is going on there, but hey, being a fan of G-Shock, probably something to uh, get on board and have a look at what's actually going on. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the news. We've got G-Shock rings. We've got Earth Watchers. We've got fashion brand collaborations, MTGs. We've got uh, information about MRG development. Lots of stuff going on. But as always, thank you so much for joining me. If you got to the end of this video, Thank you so much for listening to me for so long. Uh, please, if you get a chance, like and subscribe. Your help makes this really enjoyable to do. Thank you very much.